asynchronous, view module, activity lifetime, a lot of fun. Hello and welcome to Code with Zar. I'm Zar. How are you doing today? Resuming Code Name K. Today we're going to talk about asynchronous operations with activities. We often load the data asynchronously because the disk I/O is slow, network I/O is slow, and we don't want to freeze the UI during the process. For example, in Code Name K, we have a list of categories to load, and that is an asynchronous operation. On desktop, it's barely a challenge. On the mobile, there is one big problem: that the asynchronous code, aka task, it does not know about the lifetime of the activities. And in this video, we're going to look into what is the problem it caused, why does it happen, and how to overcome it. Let's get started. To see the problem, I am creating a Xamarin app from scratch. Feel free to follow me, do it step by step. This is going to give you some first-hand experience. But if you are very familiar with it already, jump ahead, use the chapters to see the problem. Now I just created a blank tab. The first thing that I do for an Android project in Visual Studio is to update the NuGet packages. When it is ready, give it a build. Upon success, I will then close and reopen the solution. Now let me put in some very basic layout. There's a text followed by a button. The text view has an ID of text view test, and the button has an ID of a button click me. Let's wire those widgets up with the activity. I'm going to create two fields to hold them. And then use the method find the view by ID to wire them up. Now, when the button is clicked, we want to load some data and show them in the text view. So, what I'm doing is to handle the button click event. And I'm going to start with the, a hard-coded text of hello, so that we know everything is properly hooked up. Let's see how it runs. We click the button, hello shows up. Now we are ready. Let's introduce the asynchronous operation. Let me create a method named load data async, and uh, using the namespace for the task. Of course, I don't really have a database or network operation, so I'm just going to use task delay for five seconds just to simulate the slow operation. Well, after the delay, imagine hello is returned from the database or some other place, and we return it. Next, we'll update the click handler, and we're going to call the load data async. On a side note, this is the async void. We should be more careful than the code I put down there, and I'm going to link in the dedicated video talking about that. But hey, we load the data asynchronously, and then we set it to text view test dot text field. And let me update the text a little bit before downloading. Here's how it looks like. Uh, click, wait for five seconds. 
and the hello. So what is the problem? You click, you flip the phone, and you wait. Well, nothing will come up. Wondering why? Lifetime of activities. Let's take a look. When you create an activity, lifetime events happen. You had on create, on start, on resume. Then the activity became visible. We saw the text as well as the button and we clicked on it. The handler sets the text first and the started task running for five seconds. When it's done, it returns the value and the value in turn got set to the text view. So we saw the data of hello. Now on the second time, before the five seconds, we flipped the phone. That is a reconfiguration and led to a series of events. The deal is what you saw after the flip was a new activity. Let's call it activity prime. Now five seconds elapsed. The task didn't know you have a new activity. So it went ahead and set the text on the first one. And with regarding activity prime, nothing happened. So it boiled down to the fact that the task doesn't know about life cycle or lifetime of the activities. So what can we do to overcome it? Let's talk about it. What we are looking into ideally is something knows about the life cycle. And that something is the VO module. A little bit underlining, the VO module class is designed to store and manage UI related data in the life cycle conscious way. It allows data to survive configuration changes such as screen rotations. From that, VO module seems like a perfect solution to our problem. So I'm going to show you how to use it to address our issue. Now, before we jump into the code, I'd like to address it on the paper. Let's come back to the scenario. I'll break down the lifetime events a little bit deeper this time. At the very beginning of the activity, there's on create. That is a perfect place for us to create or load a VO model. I'll show you the implementation details later. For now, let's set the goal. The VO model need to outlive activity. In other words, from the activity's perspective, if there is a VO model is exist already, we're going to reuse it. Otherwise, we're going to create a new one. Then nothing for on start. And then it comes to on resume. This activity need to observe the changes on the VO module. In other words, we need to make the VO module observable. This is the second requirement for the VO model observable. The user see the UI, click the button. We need to load the data, but we know we don't want to do the data loading in the activity. So we're going to delegate the asynchronous data loading to the VO model. That means for the VO model, it need to expose an async method that loads the data. And that is the third requirement. Imagine that load data async is called. Five seconds later, it's going to get back to the VO model, update the property of the value. And since the activity is listening to any changes there, the text view on the activity will be updated. Now, what if the phone got flipped? Upon on pause, we're going to stop listening to VO model change. Then activity prime got created. What would be ideal for us is uh, for the same sequence to happen as they were in activity. Then it is the same code, just different instances. So let's see if that is possible. Initially, we want to see if there's a VO model existing. In the case of activity prime, there actually is. So we're just going to reuse it. Then on resume, activity prime start to observe the change from the VO model. That looks great. A small detail, we might want to read the value first. Because in this case, 
there is already a value on the build module. We could do the same for the activity as well. Be careful about no, and we keep everything consistent. Now you can see, the task always talks with view module, which all live the activities. And the activity decides when to get the value or to observe the change from the view module or stop observing. So this is always going to work. Great. Now the code. By following the paper, the implementation is relatively simple. I'll start by creating a new class for the view module. I'll call it text view module. Now I'll fast forward it a little bit so that you don't need to wait. For it to be a view module, it needs to inherit from view module. Now let's flash back what we need for the view module. Three requirements, right? Outlive the lifetime, observable, and the async method to load data. Let's start with something simple. The load data async method. There's probably not too much to say about it. You wait for five seconds. Oh, but you need to set up a property to store the value. And that's it. Now we need to make this view module observable. For that, I'm going to make this class to implement I notify property changed. This is an interface to expose this property changed event. And I'm going to write a common method so that it will be easier for the properties to raise this event. Now the event argument doesn't carry the new value, but it does carry the property name. And I have a typo there, let me fix it. Now this could be called by a setter of a property so that the listeners will know when the value of a property has changed. I just am going to use the caller member name attribute to further simplify it. Let's update to the text value property. When the setter being called, I'm going to firstly making sure the value really changed. And if it is, I'm going to call this uh, raise property change method to let all the observers know. That's about all that is needed for a view module. Next, let's take a look at how to create it, reuse it, and make it all of the activities. Let's come back to the main activity. Firstly, let me create a text view module field to hold it when it's in scope. Then, in onCreate event, we're going to call something called view module provider. And we're going to use that to create the view module. Despite the awkward syntax, this is the key to create or reuse an existing view module. Basically, you tell the view module provider, this is the type of the view module that I want. If it is there, return it to me. Otherwise, create a new instance and return it to me. And the view module provider also handles the life cycle of the view module it created so that we don't need to worry about that. Let's see what else. There's something on, on resume. We read the value for the text from the view module and set it to the text view. And then we set up the observation. We 
when a property on the view model changed, we firstly want to make sure it is the, the property that we are interested in. In our case, if text value changed, we want to set the new value onto the widget. And of course, to stop listening to the event on pause. That's about it. All three requirements. Oh, and the button click is currently not using the view model yet. So let's update the code there. There's nothing going to be returned by the load data async method. It will instead update the value on the view module and the view module is watched. Hmm, a little bit of detail is uh, at the beginning, before data got loaded, there's going to be nothing for text value property. We're going to see an empty text in that case. Not a big deal, but not ideal for a demo. Let me update the view module a little bit to, to throw in a default value. So there's going to be a prompting text for loading data, and there's going to be a prompt for press button. Perfect. Now let's run it. This feels great. No matter what you try, flip the phone or do something, anything wacky, we just know it's going to work. All right, my friend, now you know how to leverage view module to asynchronously load data in Android. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, don't forget to give me a thumb up and keep coding, keep improving. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.